Hello, I'm Joseph McIntyre, an agricultural research engineer at the USDA ARS National Peanut Research Laboratory. My presentation is computational fluid dynamics modeling of airflow through in shell peanuts in a drying trailer. Peanut drying trailer is a typical first stop for in shell peanuts after being lifted from the field by a combine. Fleets of drying trailers are used to transport and dry peanuts each year at harvest time. The efficiency and consistency of drying greatly affects peanut quality and market price. To better understand the poor consistency in drying trailer performance reported by the peanut shellers, computational fluid dynamics modeling was applied to airflow in peanut drying trailers. Butts and Williams measured airflow through masses of peanuts loaded into 21-foot drying trailers. The 21 foot or 6.4 meter drying trailer is an open topped metal box with a raised perforated floor forming an air plenum underneath the peanuts. Pictured top left and top center. Air is blown into the trailer plenum by the fan of a peanut dryer that's shown in the center. Peanut dryers can also heat the air. The peanut mass was leveled and the trailer connected to a dryer to blow air through the peanuts as seen in the lower left. An empty peanut dryer tube was placed in front of the dryer inlet to smo smooth the inlet airflow and allow it to be measured. The airflow through the top surface of the peanuts was measured by a vane anemometer placed at the narrow end of a cone to accelerate the flow to a measurable speed. So on the right. The flow rate was measured in the center of each block in the measurement grid. Edge blocks are a half of the central blocks and the quarters are one quarter the area. The computational fluid dynamics modeling was done using the Autodesk CFD 2019 program. The Autodesk modeling software uses finite element methods to reduce the partial differential Navier-Stokes equations of fluid flow to algebraic forms that can be solved computationally. The differential form is shown at the top. The software divides a geometric model into small sections called finite elements, and the set of equations for each element is solved simultaneously throughout the model. The size and shape of the elements is chosen to best fit the geometry while being computationally efficient. Modeling begins with creating a computer model of the shape of the drying trailer airflow path. In this case, only the air, the blue blocks, and the peanuts, the brown block, affect the computational fluid dynamic solution, so the metal structure of the trailer is not added to the model. The two red trailer walls behind the peanut block are shown for illustration. The air inlet and outlet blocks are extended to prevent the generation of computational artifacts at the boundaries. The trailer air inlet is at the bottom left of the figure. Air flows from the inlet into the plenum beneath the peanuts up through the peanuts and out the top air block. The inlet boundary condition was set to the experimentally measured outflow or the fan performance curve for the peanut dryer used by Butts and Williams. The performance curve is sh for the fan is shown at the right. The top surface of the air block was set to zero gauge pressure to match being open to atmosphere. The rest of the bounding surfaces are modeled as impermeable walls. Peanuts are modeled as a porous distributed resistance material. Treating the peanuts as a block of porous material greatly simplifies the computations. Peanut flow resistance is computed from the length of the flow path and a user set permeability constant. The base permeability constant for the peanuts was set using the plenum pressure an average volume flow rate out the top of the peanuts reported in the Butts and Williams paper. The first graph shows the solution progress for fine grid spacing. A finer grid does give better resolution, but computations required to reach a solution increase geometrically or more with the number of elements, requiring more time and or processing power to reach a solution. If the grid is set too fine, instabilities in the mathematical approximations of the differential equations and in the flow itself can overwhelm the solution. Notice the jagged and discontinuous plot of the flow solution variables. 
In the second graph, solver settings were adjusted to increase solution stability, but required more iterations, increasing processing time. Variable changes are smooth, but don't settle to constant values after adjusting the solver. The third graph shows solution progress for a coarser grit that leads to a steady solution. Flow and peanut drying trailers can be usefully studied at coarser grid sizes that give steady state solutions. Grid size is a balance between needed resolution, processing time, and the physics of the flow under study. Actual flows may never reach a steady state at all resolution scales. Model grid sizing should match the scale of the phenomenon of interest. The use of computational fluid dynamics modeling allows for the visualization of flow within the plenum. Viewed from above, air enters the plenum through the inlet on the left side at a high flow rate, here shown in dark red, indicating 15 meters per second, then slows down as it expands out into the plenum, finally striking the end wall opposite the inlet where the flow is the slowest, here shown in dark blue indicating less than one meter per second. The arrows show the direction of flow. Notice that the corners of the trailer have arrows curving into swirls, showing that the flow has formed eddies where the flow circulates in the plenum. Looking from the side at the flow on the vertical plane through the center line of the trailer, you see flow in the plenum and peanuts set to the base permeability. Fast flow is seen at the inlet. Here dark red is eight meters per second. The flow follows the path of least resistance with the arrows showing flow traveling under the peanuts in the plenum until reaching the end wall. The flow slows down greatly on entering the peanuts and is redirected upward. The upward flow over the inlet is slower than the flow in the third of the trailer near the end wall. Such even flow, uneven flow would lead to unevenly dried peanuts. Here are the static pressure results on the vertical planes on the center line and sidewall of the trailer. Pressure is plotted from zero pascals, gauge pressure, dark blue, to 180 pascals in the top figure and 160 pascals in the bottom figure indicated by dark red. The pressure varies from the center line to the sidewall and down the length of the trailer due to the velocity distribution in the flow. On the center line plane, the pressure is high at the inlet and then drops as the flow expands into the plenum. The pressure then rises as the airflow piles up against the end wall opposite the inlet. On the side wall, the pressure is low in the corner near the inlet where there's an eddy and then increases as the expanding flow impinges on the side wall. See the bottom figure. The model did reproduce the 124 pascals reported by Butts and Williams at their measurement point on the sidewall, but shows that the plenum pressure cannot be represented by a single point measurement. Looking down from above on the top surface of the peanuts, the flow velocity leaving the top of the peanuts is much slower than that entering the plenum, ranging from 0.4 meters per second, in dark red, to 0.15 meters per second for the dark blue. The large difference in flow velocity seen in the plenum has been smoothed out by the resistance to flow of the peanuts. The area of the higher pressure near the end wall shows the highest velocities at the peanut surface. The high velocity area in the plenum near the inlet has a low velocity at the peanut surface. Even with the smoothing, uneven flow is seen at the surface of the peanuts and that would lead to uneven drying of the peanuts. To produce model results to match the flow measurements given in the Butts and Williams paper, the permeability of the peanut resistance material was varied in blocks matching the measurement grid they used. Permeability was increased or decreased in a trial and error fashion to attempt to match the flow patterns reported. Shown are the block permeabilities used to match the flow for trailer 125 from the paper. The contour plots at the top of the slide are from the measurements reported in the Butts and Williams paper for trailers 125 and 126. The units of the contour lines are cubic meters of air per minute per cubic meter of peanuts. In the middle are the flow results from the computational fluid dynamics model with adjusted peanut block permeability 
using the fan curve to control the inlet flow. At the bottom are model flow results using the same permeabilities and the inlet flow set to the reported average outflow of 230 cubic meters per minute from the paper. The model results qualitatively match the reported outflow distributions. The slower flow blue areas match the lower flow contours and the faster flow yellow and red areas match up with the high flow contours. The shapes of the flow distributions match the contours to within the limits of the shape of the peanut blocks. The model with the fan curve inlet flow produces higher flow rates than reported, but that could be due to the model having no allowance for the leaks in the trailers. When the model inlet flow is set to the actual measured outlet flow, the flow numbers are closer. The reported contours of the flows for trailers 127 and 128 are shown at the top. The model results from trailer 127, seen on the left, show slower flow velocity areas, blue, near the inlet and three areas near the in wall, as well as the intermediate velocity area, shown in yellow, projecting up from the lower side wall, which reproduce the contours seen from the Butts and Williams paper for both the fan curve and the outflow inlet conditions. The trailer 128 flow contours were well matched by the model results. Now these are seen on the right. The lower flow velocity regions are in three locations for trailer 128, one at the inlet, one near the lower sidewall, and one on the center line at the in wall. The regions of fast flow red at the side walls are also reproduced, as is the intermediate flow areas in yellow, in the area between the slow flow areas. What have we learned? Models can reproduce experimental results in peanut drying trailers. Flow character sets limits on the grid size to produce steady solutions. The pressure and flow velocity distributions in the plenum are not simple. Measurements of flow and pressure distributions in the entire trailer need to be made. Measurements of bulk peanut permeability need to be made throughout the trailer. Peanut drying trailers should be designed to direct the airflow into the peanuts. Thank you for listening. For further information, contact Joseph McIntyre, Research Agricultural Engineer at the National Peanut Research Laboratory, Dawson, Georgia. My email address is joseph.mcintyre at usda.gov.